Hi, my name's Ease O'Neill, doing a video called Well United Kingdom. It's uh, Friday, Friday the 6th of August. Not done one for a few days because uh, Monday I went out for a walk on the coastal path. Got a nine o'clock bus, was on the coastal path for 10 o'clock. Walked from Pendine Lighthouse to Seddon, five hours. Well, the forecast was cloudy, so, and I was a bit groggy that morning, so I didn't do my preparations right, but I didn't take my hat. I got sunburned, even though I never saw the sun. It was like a layer of cloud. You know, it was warm, it was nice. Uh, but I got sunburned and I got sunstroke again. I just don't know the rules of weather, me. And uh, yeah, I was ill Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Wednesday didn't go to work and my skin's peeling now it's like uh, you, know, you know some people pay a fortune for a chemical peel well I've done it naturally it's like it's all stinging my face now it's just fell off. anyway so rather than force a video I left it you know so I'm doing one now but I'm going to talk about something I'm going to kick it off and see where it goes with something that's been rattling around in my head for about three weeks I actually thought of this a few months ago, but the last few weeks it's been rattling around in my head. And I'm going to tell you this story about uh, before I left Manchester. You know, basically, work-wise, I wasn't doing very well. You know, I was working for agencies. And uh, somehow I was going down the scale and my jobs were getting worse. And uh, it's a very testing time. Because these agencies, you don't, you don't, know who they are you're just phoning up and you might go in once and you get a job and you're there for a day you're there for two days you're there for a week whatever and then you're at home sat waiting or you're on the phone at five in the morning or somebody phones you at six o'clock in the morning and says uh can you get here for eight o'clock and it's a fucking horrible way to live it is honestly it's absolutely awful and for people who've never done it, you don't understand. But zero hour contracts might sound, or it might sound innocent. I've even seen it on Question Time where you've had young students saying they like it because it gives them options. You know, they're not tied to a job. Well, yeah, for a fucking student, might suit you but for somebody with a partner and children zero hour contracts agencies are absolutely the fucking pits it's below the bottom of the ladder it's it's fucking it's soul destroying if in life you've had jobs and then Jobs have disappeared through redundancies or your fucking factories closed down or your jobs disappeared completely for whatever reason. And you then end up signing on for agencies on zero hour contracts. Even if you're on minimum wage or if you've got a skill where you're getting slightly above minimum wage, it doesn't matter. Zero hour contracts working for agencies is totally and utterly soul destroying. Well, that's the way this country went. And it didn't go this way just under Tories. It went under the, it went this way under Labour with Tony Blair. And I did the video with uh, how Tony Blair, uh, I think the video was called The Polls and how Tony Blair killed the construction industry. And I'll put a link to it below. And I made that video when I was homeless where I talked about how Tony Blair and Gordon Brown destroyed the link between self-employed builders, bricklayers, joiners, plumbers, people who were working in the construction industry, but they worked for the company. And it was usually your talent. You went and found the job yourself. All right, the job was limited. Like I'd go on a building site and I might be there for five, six months. To me, that was good if I got a job for five, six months. And the job was precarious, but it was between me and the building firm. But then Tony Blair and uh, Gordon Brown introduced the agency. And that agency was placed between me and the company. 
and they created laws that said, which I explained in the video, that if you were on a building site for 13 weeks, that company had to take you on as a full-time employee. Well, I didn't want that. The company didn't want that. So there was my freedom, but I was in a precarious position. But I had this sense of freedom. And I was doing the job that I wanted that supported my family. So I explained this in the video. But, so it's it's not just the Tories, it's Labour. And Tony Blair really, really wanted this because he was going to bring the Catholic Poles into this country. This country was going to be flooded with cheap Labour. Tony Blair, the Labour, Gordon Brown, the party of the working person, we're going to flood this country with working minimum wage people, non-skilled. Yet yeah, they were skilled that came. And what they did was they got the foothold on the ladder through minimum wage jobs and then they, they weighed up the land, they weighed up the job scene, they weighed things up and then they moved up the ladder. They, moved, they, they found their own opportunities and credit to them which is what we're supposed to do in life, you know, the ordinary people of this country. So, Gordon, Tony Blair, Gordon Brown, flooded this country with minimum wage people and they had the agencies there in place to provide them the jobs or to be the link with the company. Zero hour contracts, which meant the company didn't employ them. So the companies could employ people on a zero-hour contract through an agency, polls, whatever, but we came under that category as well because I obviously I did it, and we were disposable. And you never had this feeling that you you belonged to that company. Wherever you know, whenever I had a job, I never I never felt that I had a link to that company. I never felt that I had a chance of working for that company. I was just being used. And it's something that makes you think if you do it, if you, you know, if people, I, there'll be people who are watching this video who know what I'm talking about. And there'll be people who just haven't got a clue what I'm talking about. Or they might f say, oh, yeah, I sympathize with you. But it is the worst thing you can experience working on a zero hour contract. But I'm going to talk about something that's even worse. And it's basically slavery. And just, I think it was the year before I came to Cornwall, the winter before I came to Cornwall. Uh, I came in uh, June, something like that. June, July. Or maybe September. But I came in the summer of 2009. Well, in the winter, like the February 2009 or 2008, because I can't place which year it was. I remember me and my ex... We went to Tesco's on Altrincham Road. Tesco Superstore, get some shopping in. So he pulls up in the car. Next thing you know is, never seen it before. All of a sudden, there's these African guys. They were, they were African. They weren't like Moss West Indian. These guys were African. They were immigrants that had come over because Tony Blair wasn't just opening up the country's polls. He was opening it up to everybody. And these African guys in the old heavy blue overalls, the industrial overalls, what you got, what used to be like guys used to wear in factories years and years ago, you know, pre-war, pre-Second World War, they'd have these heavy blue overalls, full-length overalls. All of a sudden, there's these four African guys and they've got two trolleys, so it's two to a trolley. And they've got buckets of water in the trolley, in the Tesco trolley. And they've got squeegees and brushes. And as we pulled into the parking place, one of them, two of them detached with the trolley because they were over to the side. And they came up and said, what's your car, mister? I went, no, thank you. February, these guys were pushing buckets of cold water and their job was cleaning your car, dipping it in the water, cleaning your car. And that's all the equipment they had. They had a pair of blue overalls and they just had buckets of water inside the trolley 
and then bro bushes, uh, brushes and squeegees and cloths. And they were going to hand wash your car in February with freezing cold water. Fucking February. It was freezing. And I looked at them and I didn't think, fuck off, you African gets or whatever, or you immigrants or that. I felt so sorry for them because they were slaves. And what it was is somebody was testing a franchise. Somebody probably got in touch with Tesco's and said, listen, I've got this brilliant idea. We can have these guys that clean cars in your car park. We'll give you 20% of whatever we make. And these guys were probably getting paid so much a car or whatever. I don't know what they were getting paid. But I bet it was some scam where they only got so much a fucking hour or so, or so much a car. It's like Uber and all these. They've all got scams where they're not, the people who work for them are not employed. They don't get national insurance. They don't get holiday pays. Well, there is no way these African guys were getting national insurance paid. There's no way they were getting holiday pay paid. There's no way they were getting pensions paid. These guys were actually below what I thought was below the bottom. I was working at the time, zero hour contracts. And I looked at these guys and I thought, you're below me and I'm fucking depressed with what I've got. I thought I'd hit rock bottom, going from Brick Lane, whatever. I thought I'd hit rock bottom. And then there, there are these African guys wandering around Tesco car park with trolleys, with buckets of water and just brushes. And they're supposed to clean cars while you're doing your shopping. The idea is... They clean your car while you go inside shopping. You give them a fiver or whatever to clean your car. Now, these guys, this wasn't their company. They were slaves to somebody who's come up with this brilliant idea. Tesco's a fucking mag megalithic company. Stock market, top company in the stock market. You know, it's like a top company in this country. Employs so many people. It's worth so many billions of pounds. And yet they're willing to fucking use these African guys as... They're, they're willing to make money off these African guys wandering around a car park in February. They had no work up. They didn't have a work up. They didn't have a toilet. They had to go into Tesco's, I'd imagine, and use their toilet. So the idea is they start work in the morning and I actually saw them when I came out filling the buckets up because it was an outside tap. So they were filling the buckets up with cold water, freezing cold water to clean somebody's car. They must have cleaned somebody's car. The water's got dirty. Because it's not like a car wash where you get a constant spray of water or a jet wash. No, they've got these, these buckets of water. So every car, they'll have to clean the water, change the water. Now, these guys were fucking slaves, as far as I'm concerned. And it broke my heart to see it. And I never forgot it. But I've never talked about it in any of my videos. But it's been rattling around my head for a few months, and especially the last couple of weeks. They were slaves. Now, people say, well, we're not willing to work in this country anymore because like, they'd rather collect dough, especially now. With all the lockdowns and people who've been paid to stay at home, they don't want to go back to work. Teachers don't want to go back to work. Well, there's a job for you. You can go do what them African guys were doing. But them African guys shouldn't have been doing that. In a civilised society, we shouldn't expect people to do that. There are so many other options to get your car clean. We, in this civilised society, we should not, guys we should not have guys in winter cleaning your cars in a multi-fucking billionaire company car park because where does it end do you have it in office car parks then where a couple of african guys are there with a bucket cleaning your cars in december january february is that a civilized society Well, we're getting to that stage now where 
we are slaves. And I've said this before. We've got Black Lives Matter saying, no, we're all slaves at different levels. We all get a certain amount of gold. We're welfare slaves. Some people are welfare slaves where they just sit there week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out on welfare. They're slaves. And Parliament are willing to give them that for their votes. You've got a certain section of Parliament, that's Labour, Liberal, who are willing to have these people like that because they know that they'll vote because it's in their interest to vote because they promise more money to be that welfare slave. And then you get the Conservatives who rant on about it and the middle class fall for the line that these people are abusing the welfare system. Well, the money that they get, is, we can now see it. It's not real money, it's imaginary. It's just tokens. They're just welfare tokens. And anybody who's got a job, they're just tokens as well now. We can see it. Money now is just tokens. It's not real. We're going to get rid. We're moving to the new system. It's going to come where we go from the system where you physically have the tokens, whether it be a £5 note, a £1 coin, a £50 note, they're just physical tokens. And we're going to it now where it's going to be electronic tokens on your fucking mobile phone. And your money gets paid into your mobile phone, your connection to your internet connection, whatever it is, your bank, and the bank tells you that your money's been paid in electronically to the bank. You can access to that bank internet account through your phone. And then you can pay by just holding it in front of a little machine in your supermarket. So we're going from physical tokens to fucking electronic number tokens. And we're all going to be slaves to that system. And we're all going to get certain rewards it's like like i said the zero hour contracts every zero hour contract wasn't minimum wage if you had a skill you got more tokens more money but basically that system is more so for the minimum wage and then the building trade and it's to it's it's to stop yourself employed it was to break that person who could think for themselves work for themselves and they've made it so that you have to go through an agency to get your tokens from a company. And it's just a couple of simple laws. Now, I'll put the video below where I talk about Tony Blair and the polls and, and I explain it more there. But where am I going with this? Well, we've just had this recent shortage where the, the shelves are emptying on stores. Pingdemic where people are being pinged and told to stay home at work. And what's happened is, what they've tried to say is that when you get a lorry driver who is pinged and then he's told to self-isolate because he's been in contact with somebody, that means that goods aren't being moved around the country. And that's what's caused these empty shelves in supermarkets. And is this like fucking... Oh, lorry drivers. There's a shortage of lorry drivers. Well, there's a shortage because they're sat at home. That's why you start your shelves are empty. That's what we're being told. And now we've got this scandal. We can't find lorry drivers. Well, we're, we're, they're at home. What you mean is you can't find excess lorry drivers. You can't find spare lorry drivers the agencies zero hour contracts cannot find enough lorry drivers to cover for the lorry drivers that are sat at home they've been told to stay at home and the consequences of being told to stay at home is food is not moving from the supermarket uh, from the central warehouses to the stores because the lorry driver is sat at home. There is a lorry driver, but he's sat at home. What the problem is, there's not enough lorry drivers sat at home waiting for that phone call for the zero hour contracts job. These lorry drivers who are sat at home or who are registered with agencies, 
They would love a job. It's like me. It, it's, well, not me personally, but a lot of people. With me, it was different. But a lot of people who work for the agencies on zero-hour contracts, waiting for that phone call, they might work one day a week, two days a week. They might not work for three fucking weeks. Now, all of a sudden, they get a phone call because they're desperate because they're not one of the favourites of the agency for some reason. We don't know why. But a lot of these lorry drivers would love a job. But the system now works because Tony Blair pushed this system. Gordon Brown pushed this system where we have this workforce who is sat at home waiting for a phone call from a zero-hour contract agency. Now, there's not enough lorry drivers to cover for the lorry drivers that are sat at home because they've pinged, been pinged and told to self-isolate. And we've got this rolling fucking ball where more and more lorry drivers, as one lorry driver finishes his term and goes back to work, another lorry driver or two lorry drivers are being told to stay at home. Because this company that Track and Trace, Circo, I've read in the paper today, They've, they've made 30% extra profits through Track and Trace this year. Circo, it's, they're making money by telling people to stay home. Circo, a fucking private contractor being paid by the government to tell people to stay at home because they've been in a pub where somebody that night was sat at a totally different table, not in their company, but somebody came in that pub that night, had a pint, and they've registered as fucking uh, COVID positive. So these lorry drivers are being told to stay at home because they were in a picture house, they were in a theatre, they were in a football ground, they were in a club. They were wherever. And Circo are making a profit out of telling these lorry drivers to stay at home. And then we have the other side where the private contractors, the zero-hour contracts agencies, they're... they're well, they're quids in because they're sending their lorry drivers out now to companies who need their lorry drivers. So lorry drivers who are sat at home waiting for a job because there's not enough actual work in the country for them. But they're there to fill a gap. Now, that doesn't benefit people at the bottom. That benefits people at the top. So these like, it's now turned out we don't have enough lorry drivers. But if the system worked before, then we do have enough lorry drivers. We only don't have enough lorry drivers when being told to stay at home by a circle, when they've been pinged and told to self-isolate. That's the problem. But we're seeing these headlines, not enough lorry drivers. We don't have enough lorry drivers. That's why we're suffering. And then you, you're being told that if everybody vaccinated, Everything would be all right. We wouldn't have to self-isolate if everybody had a vaccination. But Andrew Marr told us that on the BBC. Andrew Marr had both jabs. And then he got ill again with COVID. So the vaccination story doesn't work. So we've got all these lies, but I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole today with this video. Because I want to concentrate on lorry drivers. Now, a lot of people would like to be a lorry driver. Now, the old system, years ago, was that a company would train up people within their company to be lorry drivers. Somebody that would work for him, three, a younger guy, say, they'd train him up to be a stacker driver. They'd, that was their responsibility. They saw that he was a steady, reliable person. My ex-missus used to be a stacker driver for Kellogg's and there was like some guys over from America and Europe that there was a big meeting and uh, they were going around the Kellogg's warehouse in Salford Stratford, huge warehouse and my missus used to be a stacker driver and she used to like load up fucking huge extensions going right up, it was like one of the huge and she was one of the main stacker drivers at Kellogg's my ex missus and she, she was dead proud when she told me about the time that all these top executives were all watching her because she was so good. She was like the job in action. Now, she was trained by the company. She didn't have to go on a stacker driving course provided by the job centre, which I've done, which is a waste of time. No, it was in her interest, with, and it was in Kellogg's interest because they um, she worked for them 
She was a good worker, so they said, how would you like to be a stacker driver? So they trained her. And it's the same the companies used to train people to be lorry drivers within their company. And it was like a loyalty. You know, you're a good employee. We'd like to train you up. But this all changed with the Tories and then Tony Blair, because Tony Blair was a Tory. He just chose to be in Labour because he'd done the mathematics and he worked out that Tories would be out of power within so many years and then it'd be Labour. So he went into Labour and then worked his way to the head of the Labour system, party system, ready to be Prime Minister. But if it had been the other way around, he'd have joined the Tories. He just wanted to be in the party that got him to the power at a certain age. Next same with Nick Clegg. Fucking David Cameron. But they changed the system whereby lorry, learning to be a lorry driver was privatised by companies like Serco and other companies. And companies were set up to train lorry drivers. And the idea was that a company would pay them to train their workers to be lorry drivers. But then companies just let it go. A company thought, why do I need to pay to train a lorry driver? Well, I can go and get one from one of the agencies, what Tony Blair and Gordon Brown set up. I don't need to train anybody up in the company because this system created where the top had no loyalty to their workers. They didn't see their workers as assets. This zero hour contract system, what Tony Blair and Gordon Brown promoted, ready for the polls coming. Because they wanted a system in place where polls could just come in, their, in this country, register with an agency, then that agency would send them out working. Now that's slavery. That's slavery a step above the Africans in the car park. I thought that was the bottom zero hour contract. But when I saw these African guys, that's slavery below where I was. Same as the guys in the car cleaning, you know, you see all these little cats. I'll talk about that another day. Because that's tied into something else. But they're not proper jobs. They're below zero hour contracts and the slavery. Now, lorry drivers, Companies, they had no loyalty to their workforce anymore. Workforce became disposable. When a workforce became zero-hour contracts agency, there was no loyalty. There was no connection. So why should they train drivers, HGV drivers, when they can just get them from an agency? Now, what I noticed over a couple of years was Czechoslovakian, Polish, Romanian lorry drivers working for companies where, because I started working in all different companies, you see, and I noticed all these Romanian, Czechoslovakian, Polish lorry drivers, and I'm thinking, where'd they get their HGV license? Well, they got obviously got them in Poland, Romania, Czechoslovakia. And it's, I had this theory that they didn't pay for these. It was in the interest of the Polish government to train a lorry driver, knowing that that lorry driver would then come over here. It was an investment for the Pol. It's a long story and it's, it's a bit wild. But in this country now, it costs a couple of thousand pounds to learn to be a lorry driver and you've got to pay it yourself. It's like you have to invest in yourself. Now, under the old system, you could be minimum wage. You could be work for a company in a warehouse, whatever, in the yard. They saw that you were a good guy and they had the, they took it upon themselves to train you up. Now you're a, a minimum wage guy working in the warehouse, working in the fucking the yard, whatever. And that company expects you to somehow mysteriously 
find a few thousand pound to fucking train yourself to be a HGV driver. Which then benefits the company. Because that com you can then say to the company, look, I've spent all this money, I've got HGV, can I have a job? Yeah, you can have a job. You get the wage that is appropriate to that job. But that company's not done anything about that. It's you. Where does an ordinary guy on minimum wage find a couple of thousand pounds for a HGV course? Where does he find it? Well, he borrows it from family or he saves it up over a time or whatever. But it's hard enough to live without having to find that, save that money. It's, they say it's an investment. It's like improving yourself. Yeah, I get that. But what was wrong with the old system? Why is it now that there's a profit involved in training people to be lorry drivers? Why doesn't the government accept that it's worth it's worth it to train lorry drivers? All right, you maybe have a few too many, but you you won't have a shortage. And it, to me, it's just the pressure. There's so much pressure now on the working people, the, the ordinary working guy, the ordinary working woman training to be HDV drivers. I don't know how it works in America. I don't know who trains them. I don't know how they get to be HDV drivers. But in this country, you've got all this red tape. And it's your responsibility. And... Here we are now where the shelves are empty in the stores because there's not enough HGV drivers. But they're trying to blame it and say, oh, when I say they're trying to blame it that it's not enough, no, what it is is there's not enough spare lorry drivers sat around waiting for that phone call for the zero hour contract because the others have been pinged. And we're just in this situation where I feel that things are being exposed or the cracks in society are being exposed. The cracks in the system are being exposed. And it's all about slavery. It's all about this rush to vaccinate us. It's all about this rush to change society. And I've said it before. It's all down to Donald Trump. They fucking panicked when Donald Trump was in power. And what they were going to do over 10, 15, 20 years... They had to do immediately. They had to get Donald Trump out of power and they had to change the system quick, ready for him coming back. Or his representatives or whoever coming back. Because I told you, there's this new force in politics. It's still evil, but it's a different evil and it's in competition with the old evil. Well, the old evil system, they're going to lose their jobs. They're going to lose all their benefits. Because when this new evil force comes in, they're going to have their jobs in the civil service, in politics. And it's just the old rear guard of the old system looking after themselves where they're trying to change society dramatically. And all this, co everything that's happening now with vaccinations and that, it's the old system rushing it in. They're in a, what, they, what they're doing now they would have done over 20 years. But now they're in this rush and it's... In a way, I'm glad it's happening because it's been exposed. Now, I told you before, my last video was no jab, no job. And I said, they're going to make it a health and safety issue. Yeah, you've got freedom to choose. But the government, the powers that be, are putting the pressure on the companies and they're saying to them, it's up to you to tell your worker, no jab, no job. We're not doing it because we need their votes. And there's a thing called freedom. You know, we do have freedoms. But when it comes to work, we don't have freedom, which is what I'm trying to say about those African guys. They were slaves. Zero hour contracts, slaves, were slaves to the system. 
you work in a factory now you've got a mini low paid job you're a slave you've got a you've got a minimum wage lifestyle you think you're not a slave you fucking are you're finding out now that you are a slave you're just on a you're just a slave that gets more tokens national health workers you think they've had this phase where they think they're special they've had 18 months of living in the sunshine they've been doing the tiktok dancing in the fucking corridors in the operating theaters they've been fucking there in the wards fucking doing the 10 15 20 of them doing the dances that took hours and hours of preparation they've all had the meetings they're all supposed to be social distancing and everything but they've all had the meetings to discuss the choreography and the music they've got they're supposed to be exhausted from work but they found the time to choreograph fucking dances and we're being told that they're special and for 18 months they thought they were special We've fucking been out there on the doorstep fucking banging pots and pans 8 o'clock at night and then the, the 8 o'clock news is showing it live. Oh, look, all the wonderful people in this country coming together to fucking for the National Health Service. Bang, 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 bang in the pots, cheering, blowing whistles. All doing it from the doorsteps and the windows, bedroom windows, because they're not allowed to leave their houses. People who aren't allowed to leave their houses are glorifying the national health workers who are fucking doing TikTok dances in fucking operating theatres and what? That's what people forget. When people were doing that on the doorstep, they weren't allowed to leave their houses. I know there was periods where they were allowed a bit, but we had this fucking period where we weren't allowed to leave our houses and yet people were banging pots and pans for national health service well now the national health service are being told ordered to vaccinate all the workers in the national health are being told they have to vaccinate or there's no job for them and we're still in this period where it's being worked on the people that they have to vaccinate they have no choice or they lose the job healthcare workers and the thing is, when a healthcare worker refuses to take the jab, they will be sacked. And then the owners of the healthcare company will get on the phone to the zero hour contracts agency and say, can you send one of your slaves to start work at six o'clock in the morning? Because we need your slave to be here for six o'clock in the morning to get the breakfast prepared for the old people and to wipe their ass and give them a fucking bed bath and dress them so that they're ready for their eight o'clock breakfast so can you send one of your slaves we've got rid of our slave because our slave wouldn't accept the jab so we need one of your slaves who has had the jab because everybody's registering now you're all getting your passports so when they, when they phone up the zero hour contracts agency, do you have any of your minimum wage slaves who have got the passport, the jib jab passport? Well, can you make sure they're here in the morning for six o'clock? We've got old people's asses that need wiping. That's, that's what's really going on. It's not being reported, but it's happening. Well, we had this thing with the Euros football and I told you the football fact I told you a year over a year ago I told you uh, March April March April last year they were saying the football fans are going to shit on us football fans instead of just letting football go just just accepting football's fucking shit it's all being used as political football it's being used as a political mallet to fucking hammer the people of this country football that's what football's being used for it's a political fucking mallet and people are going i want life to get back to normal i just want i just want me at saturday afternoon pint and go watch me football and come home and then have a nap and then watch it again on match of the day i want all my normal life back 
Well, I said fucking March, April last year, it's gone. Let it go. Don't try and cling on to it. And with these Euro finals, what we've seen is they've, they've used it as a testing ground for the passport, allowing people in for the semi and the final and making it as though it's a gift and you have to jab. And it went a bit tits up when the fucking riffraff of this country forced the way into Wembley for the semi and then they did it en masse for the fucking final. So we've had this thing with football and then we've had the footballers who are slaves to Black Lives Matter. They are slaves to Black Lives Matter. Footballers, slaves to Black Lives Matter taking the knee. Oh, it's nothing to do with George Floyd anymore. It's about Black Lives Matter. Where were those fucking footballers when those African guys were wandering around Tesco's car park? They were slaves. They were slaves in full view. Do you think black people, indigenous black people of this country, born generations of this country, do you think they gave a fuck for those African guys? Do you think ordinary people of this country, black, white, brown, Asian, Pakistani, Indian, do you think they sat in their car like me and looked at these African guys and went, fucking hell, is that how low this country's got? February, and they're wandering around with buckets of cold water and squeegees and brushes offering to clean your car. That's their stepping stone into, the, into this country. That's how they're hoping to get a grip on something in the, to get into this country. Climbing the ladder. I, was, I thought I was at the bottom of the ladder, then I saw these guys. Do you think footballers gave a shit about them? It's like when footballers, they go to get the car clean, they go to some fucking, what's it, and there's these guys rushing around the car with fucking, a lot of them are criminal enterprises, that's just money laundry. A lot of those car places you see where the guys are running around in the wellies and that, and they're fucking spraying cars and soaping them up. A lot of them are like money laundering exercises for criminals. They're converting drug money into cash. So footballers, all these, they're slaves to BLM now and they've been made into political tools. All right, they might be on five grand a week, 50 grand a week, 100 grand a week, 250 grand a week. Jack Grealish has just signed a contract with City, 250 grand a week. But I'm going to read you something about footballers, what's going on. Legal advice for clubs forcing stars to get the jab. I told you it's going to become a health and safety issue. It's not going to be you need the jab to protect yourself. It's going to be you need to have the jab to protect other people within the company, within the football club. If you don't have the jab, you can infect someone else. So you, we have to make you get the jab to protect the other people. Even though, like Andrew Marr said, Andrew Marr said on TV that he had both jabs and he got COVID again. So the jab isn't the solution, but it is what it is. If you go on too much about it, or if I go on too much about it, the video will be taken down. I could get thrown off YouTube just for saying Something like that. But here's the situation now with the Premier League and the football clubs. They're taking legal advice from the top lawyers of this country on how they can force all their footballers to have the jab. Which then will probably mean the footballers' wives and girlfriends having to have the jab. Because they will have to declare if their wife has got the jab. If their children have got the jab. But what about the employers? What about the billionaires who own the club? What about your top executives 
are they all going to have to be forced to take the jab or oh, they should be prove prove that they've had the jab but here's i'll just read this bit a sports mail revealed last month several clubs are exploring the idea of inserting vaccine clauses into contracts amid concerns about the low take-up rate of the jab there's a low take-up rate within the football these fucking millionaires in football they don't want the jab because it can take the edge off their performance they have the jab they get a bit of a fever this and that aching bones blah 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 some of them there's a prolonged effect and it can take their peak from peak performance to down which then means they don't score as many goals they don't get a they lose the place in the team because they're not they're feeling under the weather they've been feeling under the weather since they had the jab there's all these stories out there so they don't want to these are peak athletes and if you're what's been shown is if you are if you are now enough if you are peak healthy that's one of your best things to resist this fucking covid being healthy it's the people who aren't healthy that are going under you're obese you're overweight you're diabetics people who have abused their body they're the ones who are struggling against this pandemic they're the ones who are dying that are being put in coffins yeah you get the odd healthy person i know that and they keep bringing now it's been up in the papers recently they keep fetching up these stories the last few this last week there's been stories about healthy people who never took the jab because they thought it was all a fucking conspiracy and then all of a sudden they got it and they died well yeah that does happen but what are the numbers well i ain't telling you the numbers but in football there's a lot of them who, there's a high percentage who are not taking the jab because they feel i are healthy yeah they're doing all the other things but they're not taking the jab well now the football clubs are looking at making them take the jab new contracts you take the you take the vaccine but the problem is with the ones that have got existing contracts vaccine clauses in contracts have been concerns about the low take-up rate of the jab in a move that has gained support of the leagues all the leagues premier league all of them with rates varying between clubs the premier league and efl want to agree a uniform approach and have asked a leading employment qc to advise on whether it is lawful for the leagues or the clubs to make vaccination a mandatory precondition for playing now this is what's going to happen in all the big factories and your superstores your corporations that employ the vast percentage of people in this country are all now quietly examining whether they can force people to take the jab your national health service has already decided they're doing it now what will be the end result of that i don't know and i tell you what i bet they don't discuss it in the media they'll all be kept quiet individuals will be isolated an individual who protests or who, who says no will be isolated from information about other people that are doing the same as them people are being isolated in this country it's like now if i spoke up if i said something on here i would be taking this video would be taken down which then isolates the three four five hundred people who come together for information here you will be kept isolated from each other if you look at the number that watch this let's say 300 people watch this that's 300 people coming together but if the video is taken down then you're isolated from information or you're isolated from opinions and thoughts club executives are also speaking to bosses in other industries like hospitality where some companies have made vaccination mandatory for their staff in other words how did you do it it's like national service 
how did you manage to force all your workers to take the jab? Healthcare homes, how did you force? And they're looking for advice. But the problem is these footballers, they've got contracts, they've got money, they've got access to lawyers. Let's say you get a footballer who's on 200 grand a week. Plus he's made money from like advertising that. So he's got a healthy bank account. And he says, I'm not having it. And then they try to force him. Well, he gets his lawyer and he says, look, I've got a contract in it. You gave me a four year contract just six months ago. Now, if you, if you don't want to keep to that contract, just pay it up. Give me four years money and I'll leave. But I'm not taking the jab. Now, I think that will happen. But I think it'll all be kept quiet what's going on in football. See, they're going to force the spectator to have the jab. The spectator is going to be forced to have the jab. So does that mean the security personnel on the gates, the crowd control, are they going to be forced to have the jab? If the spectator is forced to have the jab, does that mean the security staff, the ordinary workers within the football club, the groundsmen, are they forced to have a jab? And then we slowly move our way up the pyramid to the footballers. How can everybody be forced to have the jab, but not the footballers? They've got to, they have to force the footballers to take the jab. They have to. And I could have told you all this over a year ago. I told you football is going to shit on this country. The football supporters, footballers, football clubs. If you want freedom, or when I say if you want freedom, you're not free if you're tied to a football club. And when I say tied, if you do, if you vaccinate, if you do all these things, you think, yeah, I'll do it for the easy life so I can go to the game. Then you're not free. You're a slave. And these footballers are slaves, even though they get 230,000 tokens a week. You know, they're on 200 grand a week. They're just tokens. All right, they might get cash. You know, they, can, they don't get 250,000 delivered to them each week in a, in a security van. No, it's all electronic. Well, it's even, it's, they can get cash from a machine. You can go to the bank, get a couple of grand so that they can go in a club and pull out a big fucking wedge to pay for the champagne. But... It'll soon enough, it's just going to be electronic tokens and they will be slaves on electronic tokens. But to me, this just shows that footballers are slaves. But I've got no sympathy for them because they got all self righteous when they became slaves to BLM. They've gone from BLM slaves to vaccine slaves now. But these fucking footballers never gave a shit about the football supporter being denied the game. They're quite happy to play in empty stadiums and get their fucking tokens paid into the bank. They didn't give a shit about football supporters. And in an empty stadium, they were taking the knee. In an empty stadium, they were taking the knee. And on match of the day, you had match of the day, you had Gary Lineker and Alan Shearer and all the other fuckers praising them. Oh, that's such a fucking, you know, taking the knee. Fucking, yeah, great. Nobody gave a shit for the football supporters. And football supporters, they're just so slow in catching on. It's... Medical staff at several clubs have become frustrated at the number of players who have yet to receive their first jab. The Premier League are also pushing ahead with plans to introduce COVID passes for all fans attending matches this season, which the government could make a compulsory requirement for all supporters. Told you, we're all, we're all fucking slaves. No jab, no job. 
No jab, you don't get in for the game. No jab, you're not allowed to play the game. And get your 200,000 tokens a week. Or is it 250 like Jack Grealish?